Half a day and welcome to Weekend Edition. I'm Carmen Victoria Tirlai, so glad you could join us. While the Attorney General's office is still continuing the search for a new medical examiner to replace the retired Dr. Aurelio Espinola, but a nationwide shortage in medical examiners is hurting the effort. Meanwhile, the lack of a permanent forensic specialist is impacting police investigations here on island. Acting Police Chief Steve Ignacio cites a recent homicide in Harmon as an example. The autopsy is a vital part of any uh, criminal investigation uh, when we're dealing with uh, death investigations. So uh, with uh, the lack of an autopsy at this point and the lack of a medical examiner to do an autopsy, uh, you know, we cannot uh, come up with the uh, uh, cause of death at this point. The AG's office says there is a local physician it can contract for non-homicide related deaths, but the lack of a full-time medical examiner is starting to weigh. You know, at the practical level, it kind of slows things down uh, because, you know, uh, the, the findings of the police, you know, work in tandem with the findings of the autopsy and the, 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 the two in the investigation and the examination tend to support each other. The AG says the high salaries commanded by Emmys has also been a stumbling block, although the CNMI has joined Guam to help with that because Dr. Espinola also used to handle the CNMI's cases. Rest assured the search for a full-time replacement will go on because law enforcement officials at both the AG and GPD agree they can't go without one. A medical examiner, you know, a forensic pathologist, is a critical po component of the criminal justice system, especially when we're dealing with death investigations. For Guam's News Network, I'm Nestor Lacanto. It's been a little over a month since he's been with the Guam Fire Department. Acting Fire Chief Daniel Stone shares his thoughts and ideas on the recent transition report released by the Leon Guerrero Tenorio administration. Jonah Goncharfras has more. The first couple of weeks as acting fire chief of the Guam Fire Department were spent visiting the 12 fire stations on island. Daniel Stone says the response was that of support, but understandably there was a wait and see kind of feel. I will work diligently towards making the necessary improvements um, and uh, listening to uh, suggestions for improvements and reviewing them um, and keeping the best interest of the department, uh, our personnel and the government uh, at the forefront of any of my decision making. In a report compiled by the Transition Advisory Committee, it notes that within the first 100 days in office, GFD emergency medical technicians' work schedules should be modified to eight hours. This is something that the acting fire chief did not recommend, but what he did recommend was creating standalone EMT positions, which is still very much a work in progress. He says that if they are able to identify a reliable funding source, as well as qualified applicants. I foresee savings that could take place uh, as soon as we fill that position. Uh, by way of putting sworn, uniformed firefighter EMTs back in on the engine companies, uh, at the rescue bases, uh, back on the hazmat team, um, by having these non-firefighter EMT staff the ambulance. He says this is in no way a replacement or reclassing of current firefighters, but rather a new position that they will have in their organization. The savings will potentially be realized by not using firefighter EMTs to staff the ambulances. To also um, receive a 15% incentive pay uh, for being assigned to the medic. Um, and the nice thing is it will provide us some flexibility should that um, non-firefighter EMT call in sick. We would have the flexibility to take one of our firefighters uh, and fill that gap, uh, negating the need for overtime for that person. Well aware of the projected shortfall for fiscal year 2019 since late last year, he maintains that GFD continues to provide quality service with the same level of professionalism and dedication despite financial constraints. It's taken planning and discipline, uh, but our commitment to the public's safety uh, and mission success is the still the bedrock of the fire service culture. He says despite some challenges, he is comforted by the fact that he, along with the public safety community, have the support of the governor and lieutenant governor. As we have our meetings and provide our assessments and our needs, uh, they've been very attentive uh, and uh, receptive, and uh, that makes the, our jobs a little bit easier as far as uh, knowing that we're at least being heard. Reporting for Guam's News Network, I'm Jonah Goncharfras. What's in a name? Chris Barnett is on a quest for clarification about one local senator's name. Here's more. Is it Senator Kelly Marsh or is it Senator Kelly Marsh Titano? Not even Gov Guam seems to know. 
Dr. Kelly G. Marsh. Joining me here this morning is Senator Kelly Marsh Titano. I'd just like to recognize Senator Kelly Marsh, who is the Oversight uh, Committee for uh, Decolonization. Senator elect Kelly G. Marsh Titano, escorted by her husband, Tyrone J. Titano. Dr. Kelly G. Marsh. We ask the freshman Democrat senator to please clarify. Through uh, the campaign, Part of my presentation was trying to clear that up because sometimes people called me Marsha and they thought the Titan was the last name and Marsha was the first name. So it's, it's Kelly Marsh is my legal name. I've written for a lot of years um, academically and otherwise and so I'm recognized as Kelly Marsh that way but I've started socially putting Titan in parentheses or with a hyphen but legally it is Kelly Marsh. Right. When Marsh ran for senator, the last name Titano was prominently displayed on her signs. Now that she's a senator, the official legislative website lists her name as Kelly Marsh with Titano in parentheses. While she is married to Bureau of Stats and Plans head Tyrone Titano, Marsh tells KUAM News keeping her maiden name was a priority for her. When we filed for our marriage certificate at Public Health, I actually had to write a paragraph to explain why I wanted to keep my last name and then they had to review and approve it. So I found that very interesting. That, is that how it is? Yeah, that we're still doing that. So if Senator Marsh wanted to keep her maiden name when she got married, why did she use Titano when she ran for political office? We felt it was a fair question to ask, so we asked it. Did the senator capitalize on the name she didn't want to use when she got married when she ran for senator. If you look up some of my academic writings, I've been using it for years. Well, like I said, um, I do it socially, and then um, I put it in parentheses or I have it be a, a hyphen. So in, in that way, I do it that way. While Senator Marsh claims to be using the Titano name socially, she's actually using it professionally as a sitting senator in our 35th Guam legislature. While she admits she's used both Marsh and Titano for scholarly writings, a cursory KUAM News search showed most of her writings used the Marsh name. Marsh admits this whole name thing has been a source of friction with her in-laws. The family's position, as you're probably not surprised from the beginning, has been for me to legally change my name. So. That may be the in works, maybe especially after this interview, my husband <laughs> watches this. For Guam News Network, Chris Barnett reports. Thanks, Chris. Well, most know her for her work with the Harao Academy. And Marie Arceo talks about what she's been focused on since taking the helm at the Department of Chamorro Affairs. Here's more. It was somewhat bittersweet for Anne-Marie Arceo. After all, for the past 15 years, she and her family played a huge role in the language revitalization with the creation of the Harao Academy. It was very difficult for me to leave that, but I knew that as the elders asked me to come and take this position and um, uh, our Magahaga and Sigundo Magalahi asked me, I, I knew that I had to um, step it up and it wasn't about, it's not about me, it's about serving our people in the capacity and my experience and sharing my knowledge with, you know, whatever difference I could make. Upon assuming the role, she has hit the ground running, focusing on the relocation of ancestral remains. The remains were previously in a storage, but she wanted to move them to a more prestigious location. These remains are from archaeological and excavation sites all over the island. They're safe now and we could work on preparing them for reinternment. They've been sitting for um, over 20 years, over 25 years in these boxes. And um, I think the most honorable thing we did was to get volunteers, including my husband and some relatives, uh, and working with public-private partnerships uh, to move all of these remains here to a safe place so that they, we can prepare them for reinternment. She says giving our ancestral remains a proper burial will be one of the greatest works she has done. For me, that brings honor to our ancestors, that um, we need to really work hard, and those are one of my focuses, and the focus of uh, this administration is to reintern and you know, bring them back to peace. 
With the safe transport of the remains and artifacts to an appropriate space, which has been generously donated by Mr. Flores and his family, what comes next? For now, we have monies given to historic preservation, which is led by uh, Ms. Linda Ogan, and I'm very thankful for her work in all of this. Uh, she's actually uh, already got it to a point of uh, where they have the building plans, you know, and the architectural plans for the memorial site where these are going to be reinterred. After that, the next step is trying to secure funding for the actual building of the monument. That's where the public can help, and you know, uh, we might think about doing something with the museum as far as uh, uh, maybe uh, funding or donations that could be given so that we could start it up just to uh, fund the building being built, maybe sponsorships. Um, that's something that we have to look at even deeper after this first step. And then third is to finally do the burial and the reinternment. And that'll be a grand ceremony, the most appropriate for our ancestors who have been laying this way for so long. Reporting for Guam's News Network, I'm Jonah Gancharfas. Well, you can also find more on Anne Marie's story on this month's episode of Cruising. Stay tuned. Next on Weekend Edition, we'll rehash some of the big stories of the past week and still to come, the Guam Crime Stoppers report. There are more ways to experience Guam via KUAM News, giving you what you want, when you want, and how you want it. From smart devices, Alexa, what's in the news? Here's your flash briefing. Over the web, on mobile, on streaming platforms, with immersive, interactive formats, and via social media where it's more than just content, it's conversation. More ways to keep you informed and entertained whenever you want it, wherever you are, on whatever device you're using. A simple handshake, that's all Jake Calvo needed when he started his company. Today, 80 years later, we like to say thank you to all of you who have taken our hand in trust. Thank you to the dreamers. Thank you to the realists. Thank you to the family oriented. Thank you to the entrepreneurial. Thank you to those climbing the corporate ladder and to the ones starting a new life together. Thank you to the traditionalists and the edgy to the young at heart and the old souls. Thank you to the daring, to the protective, to the practical. Thank you to the hopeful, to all of you from all of us, our deepest, happiest, and infinite thanks. 80 years here for you. 80 years thanks to you. Calvo's Insurance, a legacy of trust. The comfortable, the familiar. Neither one of these will ever give you a new perspective on things or make your heart skip a beat. Comfortable isn't something you'll tell your grandkids about. And familiar, well, that'll be there when you get home. But until then, there's a world that needs exploring. Getting out of your comfort zone. It's possible in the family of Hyundai SUVs. Hoffaday and welcome back. Well, many headlines covered this week caught your eye either on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Now it's time to take a look at what you had to say. Hey everyone, I'm Asha Robles, and here's what happened this week on Trend Spotting. The conversation continues on controversial Bill 50. Touted as a Romeo and Juliet law, the bill was introduced by Speaker Tina Munya Barnes and Senators Jose Terlahi, Amanda Shelton, and Regine Bisco Lee. Board of Education member Ron McNich sounded off on the bill, advising the school board to take a closer look at the bill. While he doesn't fault the senators for introducing the measure, he said the narrative that this bill somehow addresses a great need in the community is simply not true. Attorney General Levin Camacho released a statement in support for Bill 30, saying the law should distinguish between child molesters and teenage consensual sex. The bill would create a close-in-age exception for what is now a criminal sexual conduct felony. The bill also sets a maximum offender age of 19 and a close-in-age exception of less than four years, meaning a 19-year-old could have consensual sex with a minor over the age of 15 and, if caught, only be charged with a misdemeanor. McNich tells KUAM News Bill 50 also infringes on parental rights in the way it seems to legislate the age of consent downwards of 16 years old. This is how our online followers responded. 
Schnester on Instagram is against the bill and stated, quote, First of all, minors are scientifically and legally unable to make rational decisions. They are still in the developmental stages of their adolescence and are not fully formed adults. And goes on to say that softening penalties against adults who commit statutory rape suggests that the law should protect pedophiles and rapists. The same reactions can be found over on our Facebook page. John Feeney says, A 15-year-old cannot make that type of decision. And Donna Marie expresses how they should focus more on education and the hospital instead of allowing loopholes for predators. Speaker Tina Munya Barnes said the bill was introduced at the request of the AG. No public hearing has been set for the bill. One of three men videotaped allegedly having sex with a young girl was arrested. Vianney Nenis Hosai, 18, is charged with first-degree criminal sexual conduct, possession of child pornography, and dissemination of child pornography. On January 22nd, detectives assigned to the Guam Police Department's Domestic Assault Response Team launched a criminal sexual conduct investigation based on the Guam Crime Stoppers tip. Through the investigations, detectives discovered that a viral video was circulating on social media showing a female minor being sexually assaulted by three men. Investigators then learned that the suspects were off-island. Police say DART investigators worked with the Office of the Attorney General and federal law enforcement counterpart to issue arrest warrants and coordinate the suspects' return to Guam. Authorities say the Manilao man was taken into custody after arriving at the AB Wanpat International Airport. More arrests are pending. Here's how the online community reacted. Cheryl Jensen asked, How did something so vile go viral? Leilani Dalig responded, saying she is appalled at the fact as well, and says, Shame on all who saw or passed it on. And Cindy Hansen chimed in, stating, Guam's child pornography laws say every person who shared the video is guilty of child pornography. Every single person. Police say detectives continue to work with the AG's office and federal law enforcement counterparts to bring closure to the case. Lastly, don't forget to check out the newest segment, Starting Lineup, on the KUAM News Facebook page every weekday starting at 9 a.m. This new streaming series provides audiences around the world the opportunity to watch, interact, and weigh in on different buzzworthy topics on Guam. Starting Lineup will be archived after each airing and will be available on the KUAM News Facebook and YouTube pages. For now, we'll see you guys next week. Thanks, Sasha. Well, Jason is coming up next with your Guam Crime Stoppers report. If you get nervous about having dental treatment, you're not alone. An estimated 35 million adults experience anxiety or nervousness at the simple thought of visiting the dentist. As your dentist, I strive to make your visit as painless or pain-free as possible. And I frequently tell my patients that in the 21st century, if we can give you medicines to put your tooth asleep or medicines to take an infection or toothache away, we can surely give you something to help relax you and take all fear away. No one ought to sit in a dental chair thinking of bad childhood memories or fearing injections. If you're a dental coward, but you really do want your teeth fixed, don't wait until the pain is killing you. Come in, tell us your fears, and set up an appointment. We have convinced many that dental treatment doesn't need to be scary anymore. For your helpful dental minute, I'm Dr. Kenny Bourgeois of Paradise Smiles. You shall never know all the good a simple smile can do. The Ram 1500, unrelenting capability, groundbreaking style, uncompromising luxury. 2019 Motor Trend Truck of the Year. Right now, during Ram Truck Month at Cars Plus in Mighty, save up to $10,500 on new Ram 1500 Crew Cab or the new 2019 Ram 1500 Regular Cab. Only $208 per paycheck. Financing as low as 1.99% is available for those who qualify. Come see for yourself. It's Ram Truck Month at Cars Plus in Mighty. Cars Plus, driven by you. Hello day, everybody, and welcome back. The man with the plan is here in studio, Sergeant Paul Tapal from GPD. And Sergeant, you tell us all the time, young people, old people, residents of Guam, they have to be stewards of our community, and they have to take direct responsibility for mm -hmm. 
keeping everybody safe, watching out for each other's backs. And we actually saw that this very week up at Simon Sanchez. Yeah, absolutely. And I want to thank the staff of uh, KOM, you, yourself, Sabrina, and, uh, you know, the staff that really helped showcase the initiative. I know uh, with the Crime Time segment, we featured what happened at Simon Sanchez. But the beautiful thing that we highlighted was the initiative coming from the students, which was the initiative of the Mad Sharks. And uh, after revisiting and watching again, I was really taken back by the efforts that these kids put into to make a difference and you know that pretty much is the acronym making a difference mm. um, not just for themselves but the entire student population that i believe will resonate out into the community and it really goes to show that yeah you know when what you said about taking ownership and stewardship that's that's just beautiful work and uh, you know big kudos to uh miss masanai and of course mr fanonia and of course their advisors for helping the kids formulate this and and really having it take off to where it needs to be. But they did resonate a very, very strong, and, and that message echoed uh, on the live stream, which you can actually watch on our YouTube channel right now. Just make sure to check out the playlist of starting lineup. You can see Sergeant Tapao and the uh, young students from the mm -hmm. Mad Sharks program, once again, making a difference. But they were emphasizing, they said, you know, we want to take responsibility and ownership of our community, but we realize we need a closed circuit television system it's kind of ridiculous why we personally have to raise the funds to do this, but they're still doing it, though. Yeah, they're, they're doing something. And they are and, angry. And it, and, and it really is. And, you know, and, and, and that's attributed to the, to the equation of crime, right? It's like, when do we do something? It's whether we want to prevent it from happening or we become a victim of the crime from happening. And by you understanding now what you need to do, it really sets the tone for generations to follow because... Uh, like I always say, when I go out to do my school crime stoppers presentation, I always tell the outgoing seniors, leave your school better than when you first came out or if you first came in. And by seeing what the student body and everybody that's tied into this Mad Shark uh, initiative, it really does speak volumes of what the kids want to do and what they want to leave behind for future generations to follow. But whether it be a preventive measure or you were a victim of a crime, the point is, is that they're doing something positive and they're, they're taking a very proactive approach and that is really i gotta commend that i gotta really applaud them again mm -hmm. for their efforts well i know when we were doing the live stream there were other kids from other schools you know gw kids ukudu mm -hmm. jfk um even other you know private schools like harvest and st john's they were jumping in and they were like hey congratulations to you guys they were giving you know the thumbs up emoji applauding them um what are you seeing when you visit like other schools about what that strong message from Sanchez students is? And is, is that like really reverberating around the other schools? It, it, it really is, you know, getting them to put that message out there. And I, I, I want to echo one, what one of the advisors or one of the student members said about how they relate to the students by using modern day um, social media platforms such as WhatsApp, Twitter and everything. Kids can relate to that. And I took that and I listened to it very, I listened to her testimony very carefully because of the fact that it gave me a tool and a mechanism in which I can actually reach out to the, the population of the student body and, and bring in the message of what we can do to make a difference in the school. And when she said that kids respond better to text messaging, yeah, I had to think of my daughter, you know, it's like really, it's like the conversation doesn't have a face-to-face -face anymore. Mm -hmm. The conversation is what we see in the screen. Whether that mechanism works for you to put out what your initiatives are or whether you actually go out there into the community and, and take a stand and be heard. The point is, is that you're putting your initiative out there and you're being heard with the community one step, one, one step closer in achieving your goals by making people or making the community aware of what you're doing and how you can actually help make a difference. All right, now speaking of staying aware and staying frosty, uh, what do you got for this week's Crime of the Week? This week we're asking the entire island to take a stance and really this is an auto pedestrian crash that happened. We're doing our best to bring the numbers down, you know, but when we deal with a fatal crash involving a pedestrian and we don't have a subject vehicle, it makes it harder for us to really bring closure to the case. So we're asking the community to be stewards and take ownership of our island and help us bring closure to this case. All right, well, here is the 411. Please take notes and find out how you can help. On Sunday, February 17, traffic investigators from GPD's Highway Patrol Division were activated to assume a fatal auto-pedestrian crash which occurred on Route 8, Purple Heart Memorial Highway in Mighty by Tatira Street. Now, the preliminary investigation suggests that on Saturday, February 16, at around 11 p.m., a 50-year-old man was struck while walking on the eastbound lane by an unknown vehicle which was traveling on Route 8 by Kwangwa. Now, the pedestrian was transported to Naval Hospital Guam, where he was pronounced deceased by attending physicians. Now, the Guam Police Department and the Guam Crime Stoppers are reaching out 
out to the community for their help in reference to this auto pedestrian crash which occurred on our island's roadways. If anyone has any information about this crime or any other crime, you can call our 24-hour hotline at 477-HELP, that's 4357, or submit a tip online at guam.crimestoppersweb.com. All calls will remain completely confidential and a cash reward of up to $1,000 could be paid if the information provided leads an arrest and a grand jury indictment. Your call does make a difference. Okay, Sergeant. Now, funny thing about that presentation over at Sanchez, we were live streaming. We had the easy part. You know, mm -hmm. that was your birthday too. So, you know, you, you had a little bit more spring in your step and, you know, everybody was like, hey, Sergeant Tapel, happy birthday. <laughs> I saw that. <laughs> but I almost saw maybe like a tear come to the side of your eyes because you saw these young people exhibiting wisdom and leadership and responsibility probably be beyond their years. You know, even to do something like you said, these are outgoing seniors. They're taking care of a school for, you know, the yeah. next five, six years. And, and, and that really attributes to their, their character and who they are because that, that's here really because one of the members is actually a classmate of my daughter's in the Upward Bound um, initiative or program at the University of Guam. And um, hearing what my daughter brings home about how Upward Bound pre prepares them for college preparatory classes and everything, but also teaches them character uh, building skills, it really brought a really nice sense of wow you know these are the kids that are making that difference these are the kids that to peer not peer pressure but to peer mediation or to peer um, support kids can actually gravitate towards that towards this initiative it's easier for kids or students to gravitate to, to an initiative that is spun up by people within their peers versus us within the guam police department coming in and tell them this is what you need to do Right. But it, it makes more sense that they listen to their kid or their, their fellow student body and understand that collectively, as a whole, they all can make that difference. Absolutely agree. We'll see you next week, Sarge. Hey, thanks for having me, Thanks man. so much. We're back after this. Guam's auto appearance specialist, Elegant Reflections, has been providing the automotive industry with professional detailing and car care products at its highest quality from complete detailing, full interior detailing, exterior detailing, headlamp restoration, hand washing, seat and carpet shampoo, engine degreasing, undercarriage cleaning, paint sealant, fabric protection, paint oxidation removal, and so much more. Visit us at our new location. Call 646-5555 for an appointment. Elegant Reflections, Guam's auto appearance specialist. Over 20 years of experience. Introducing Triple J's Online Shopper, the new, faster, easier way to purchase your next vehicle. Explore hundreds of new and used vehicles in full 360-degree view. Get pre-approved instantly from the comfort of your home or office. Personalize your own finance terms and get top market value on your trade-in in just a few quick, easy steps. Buy with confidence from start to signature. And we'll even go the extra mile to deliver your vehicle to your home or office. Have a question? Our sales team is just a chat away for instant assistance. Click, pick, drive. Complete the entire car buying process with Triple J's online shopper and purchase your next vehicle at TripleJGuam.com today. Can I just get it right back? And of course, before we close out the news tonight, our latest round of birthday shout outs from the Cold Stone Creamery Birthday Club. It's your birthday. Happy, happy birthday to you. Shani Tenorio, who's celebrating on this beautiful March 2nd, wishing you all the best on your special day, and may all your wishes and dreams come true. With lots of love from Shelly and Richard, and a very happy birthday to everyone celebrating their birthday this weekend. Now remember, you can be a part of the Cold Stone Creamer Birthday Club by registering online on KUAM.com. Please make sure to include with your photo, your name, and of course, your birthday. That's all the time we have. From all of us here at Guam Season Network, thanks for watching and have a very, very safe weekend. Closed captioning is brought to you by IT&E. Explore your world.